Mr. Zuckerberg, in September, Facebook tagged an ad run by the American Principles Project in Michigan that criticized Joe Biden and criticized Senator Gary Peters. The ad was tagged because it was, quote unquote, missing context. Now, the next day, the ad was shut down entirely by Facebook. Facebook relied on a supposed fact check from PolitiFact, which is a nice way for you to avoid uh, taking accountability for the problem, except that the facts check in question literally said that the ad, quote, uh, makes, quote, predictions we can't fact check. Um, apparently, this had to do with lacking context. So when did lacking context become a new standard for political ads? I mean, uh, all political ads, all ads in general, but certainly all political ads lack context. Uh, ben Sass just uh, finished a resounding uh, victory in Nebraska. And, and I'm sure his ads didn't say, Ben Sass, great senator, but uh, not that great of a hockey player. Or uh, There is always context that is lacked out, that, that is lacking. Let me ask you, was Twitter being a publisher when it censored the New York Post? No, we have very clear policies on um, the conduct we enable on the platform. Um, and if there's a violation, uh, we take an enforcement action and people choose to commit to those policies and, and to those terms of service. Except your policies are applied in a partisan and selective manner. You claim it was hacked materials, and yet you didn't block the distribution of the New York Times story that alleged to talk about President Trump's tax returns, even though a federal statute makes it a crime to distribute someone's tax returns without their consent. You didn't block any of that discussion, did you? Our policy was focused on distribution of the actual hack materials. Did, did, did you and block the, the discussion York, uh, of the president's tax return material? And in the New York Times case, uh, we interpreted it as reporting about the hack materials. Did, not did you block about. Edwards? Jake Sir Sherman, a reporter at Politico, tweeted the following. I tweeted a link to the New York Post story right after it dropped yesterday morning. I immediately reached out to the Biden campaign to see if they had any answer. I wish I'd given the story a closer read before tweeting it. Twitter suspended me. So you actually have a reporter reporting on a story, asking the other side for comment. And Twitter says, hi, Jake Sherman, your account at Jake Sherman has been locked for violating Twitter rules. Now, what did the what did the Politico reporter do? Immediately tweets after that. My goal was not to spread information. Well, that's a little worrisome just on an, in and of itself. My goal was to raise questions about the story. Oh, my overlords in Silicon Valley. I was attacking the New York Post. You don't understand. I was attacking them as I did in subsequent tweets and see how the Biden campaign was going to respond. They later did respond. And then, not long after, uh, Jake Sherman comes back with, my account is clearly no longer suspended. I deleted the tweet. When Twitter is editing and censoring and silencing the New York Post, the, four, the newspaper with the fourth highest circulation in the country, and Politico, one of the leading newspapers in the country, is Twitter behaving as a publisher when it's deciding what stories reporters are allowed to write and, and publish and what stories they're not? No, and that account was not suspended. Um, it fell afoul of the hacked materials policy. Um, we realized that there was an error in that policy and the enforcement. Hold, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking hours. at the tweet from Twitter that says your account has been locked. You're, you're telling me that this is not an that's accurate. A, that's a lock. That's a lock and can be unlocked when you delete. The I, I understand tweet. that you have the star chamber power. Your answer is always, well, once we silence you, we can choose to allow you to speak.